Hello everyone, Mr. Merkid here, and today's a new series where I'm going to show you a basic hardware ID lock for your program to secure it. Uh, the reason I'm going to show you this way, as well as my other way, is because this way is a little bit more secure. You know, everyone has like a unique ID for their computer and their hardware, so it's probably the better option when coming and looking at security. Uh, so I'll show you a basic method now. It'll probably be a two-part uh, series here where I'll show you how to create this thing um, but in this one um, we're just going to be showing you how to set up the function which will get the ID of the processor and obviously you can use this same method I show you in this video to get the ID of the other hardware components so they're things like the motherboard ID and the graphics card they're just two of the other things you can do uh, and to take this even further you can use MD5 encryption to make it even more secure uh, just using the processor ID it's obviously going to be a short little number whereas you could get all four put them in a long like put them in a line and then encrypt it and it becomes a very secure number which no one can um, replicate yeah so let's begin with this we just want to create a new sub function here at the bottom uh, and I'll call this uh, public sub and we'll call this get CPU and inside here we want to create a few things um, first off we'll create a string which will hold the value of the CPU ID so we'll just call this CPU ID as a string and that will be equal to nothing for now because we haven't got the ID obviously uh, underneath here we want to create a new management class so we can uh, get a hold of the processor so we can say dim m class short for management class as a new management class and that didn't show up because we didn't import system.management yet so if you come up to the top of your code you want to import system.management like that and that should all be fine um, so if you scroll back down to the bottom you'll notice it's blue now because it's a valid and recognized class um, but obviously if you imported system.management got an error uh, you want to hit project and add a reference and you want to come into assemblies and in the framework and you can scroll down and you'll find system.management here as you can see I've got it ticked um, if, if, you, if yours isn't ticked and you get an error just tick this and press OK and it will add it as a reference to your project and you should be good to go. You'll notice that this is in a light blue colour now. Uh, so once that's all sorted and cleared up, uh, you want to put two brackets on the end of this and inside the speech marks inside you want to type win32 underscore processor like that. So that is getting our processor. Uh, if you come down we want to create a management object collection now so we can say dim mo collection like that uh, as a management object did I spell something wrong management object collection and that is going to be equal to our management class and we're going to get every instant of it so it's going to be equal to m class get instances so it's getting everything inside the processor uh, so underneath here now we want to get everything inside our collection so we can say for each we can call this mo as management object so for each object in our mo collection CPU info or oh, sorry CPU ID is because from before when I was doing it CPU ID is going to be equal to mo mo dot properties inside brackets here it's going to be processor ID and this is where you'll enter other things uh, other than processor um, what I was talking about at the start dot value dot to 
string so we'll get the string value of that thing then under here we can exit the for and the next and now obviously we've got our value so our value here that we've set is now the processor ID and obviously CPU ID is now holding the CPU ID of this computer so we we want to do something with this ID uh, for now we're just going to be displaying it as a label so get a new label in you can do this in lots of other things but we'll get a new label in and just underneath this next here after it's got it after it's got it I want to say label and let's just grab the number of that label label 12 so label 12 dot text is just going to be equal to CPU ID so now that's just going to display our processor ID there uh, we could run that but obviously it wouldn't work we need to actually call our function in form load and all we need to do to call that is get CPU like that no asterisk in the middle just get CPU and let's launch this up real quick and what we should see is a label displaying my ID of my CPU so let this just load up now so as you can see that's the ID of my processor um, so that is really it for this video um, but in the next video what I'm going to be showing you is how to put this ID into a file on a server and you'll be checking if this matches a file or a piece of string on the file that will obviously allow or deny you access to the tool and I might even show you how to encrypt it into a hash and make things even more secure so yeah that's really it for this video uh, next video should be in the next day or two I'm kinda busy so I get them out when I can but hopefully you did enjoy it and if you did, leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time.